that the two songs are sung. One song is very much known. Um, it is Sri Rupa Manjari Pade, but the second is not so much known. Mm, it goes like this. Tuhu, tuhu daya sagara tarayite prani. You, O oh Krishna, are an ocean of mercy. To deliver the living beings, you have brought and taught your innumerable holy names. You have invested your full potency in your holy names and have made no restrictions regarding time or place. The touch of Sri Nam is equal to you. You have distributed this treasure house of mercy throughout the entire creation. Note his fra phrasing. He said, a treasure, do we brought a treasure house? It's Sri Nama, and you have not just put this treasure house in one capital of yours, you have distributed or multiplied it many times. What can you have from a treasure house? You just have to, oops, break open the door, and then <coughs> jewels, emeralds, smaragds, gold, um, come breaking out of the doors. So in the, the holy name is compared with such a treasure house. You get your, to know your relationship with Krishna. Boom, another treasure in the treasure house is Prema. And yet another uh, treasure in the treasure house of the holy name is, uh, yeah, you, you understand who you really are. That's, that's good, no? Mm. But then comes another song, uh, another uh, line. He says, Tuva daya aichana parama udara atishaya mondonata bhagahamara. Such is your supremely magnanimous compassion, O Lord. But my luck is extremely poor. I have so much poor luck because my intense affection for Sri Nam has never awakened. Thus, the heart of Bhaktivinoda is overcome with sorrow. So when the singer came to this <coughs> two lines, you, you have brought the, your holy name, which is a treasure house of all the important spiritual treasures. But I am so lucky, unlucky, I am so unfortunate, I have no affection for this holy name. Then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati cried and cried and cried at his deathbed. A very nice song uh, which shows you the meaning of what uh, uh, affection for the holy name is. This affection for the holy name can be awakened or stabilized when we hear more about Krishna, his qualities, how he thinks, how he looks, um, and so on and so forth. And as a result, our attachment to Krishna becomes more and more firm. So, with this evening katas, uh, we are trying to share a little bit about Krishna's wonderful beauty and his uh, qualities and his pastimes. And today I would like to share with you a kata which I have already shared with the devotees in Alachua when they were kind enough to have me as their guest and I uh, would like to share it now with all of you. So we are taking you to uh, Brindavan Dam uh, and please travel with us.
it is morning. A sense of sadness spreads through Vindavan's village. Krishna, the beloved darling of all the residents of Braj, is getting ready to approach the western town's gate. It is from this gate where the Lord will leave the village of Vindavan. The bridge passes are so stricken, so full of grief because for them to live means to look at Krishna. And when they are not in Krishna's presence, they feel as if dead. Some gopis faint. Some other gopis break down on the steps of their households. And others want to leave the house. They're stopped by their mothers-in-law. But the gopis say, we must go. Only the cowherd boys and the cows are jolly because they will spend a whole day with Krishna in the forest. When Hari looked back over his shoulder as he entered the forest, he saw that the Brajavasis had stopped following him. This made him bloom with joy. Released from the chain of the Brajavasis' glances, Krishna jumped forward into the forest, free and restless like a young mad elephant. The coward boys were dancing, singing, laughing, leaping, feeling ecstatic, stumbling over each other, joking and playing with each other. For instance, they would take some fruits and they would throw the fruit to each other. <laughs> play like this, very, very jolly. They imitated Krishna's activities, like how he peacefully stands in front of his mother, but restlessly looks at the girls and how his voice can falter. As some of the boys went between the trees and vines imitating the restless glances and slight smiles of the gopis through their open veils. So they, they, they did this, I think, they went like this, you know, and then they went like this. And I'm, I'm not so good at this, but uh, yes. Others walked on their hands. Listen to this. I think, Bali, can you walk on your hands? A little bit, maybe two meters. <laughs> they walked very far and uh, they were imitating the cows rolling on the ground with bent necks and raised ears. Others were arguing. They refuted the meanings of Krishna's words like learned debaters. <laughs> Others were fighting each other with sticks or with their arms. Some were throwing items of the forest at, at each other. And others showed their skills in balancing on a stick, while some were dancing, uh, laughing or pleasing Krishna with some other seva. <laughs> I did hear they, they, they placed a stick like this on the ground and then somehow 
jumped on the stick and balanced. And Krishna would laugh because it was really an intense balancing act. And then in this way, they would give joy to Krishna. So everything changes in the afternoon. Everyone is sad in the village of Vrindavan and some lie down to wait for Krishna. But in the afternoon, everyone gets up from bed. And those who are on the fields and tr they had tried to work on the fields, but they had always plucked from the empty plants because their mind was no longer there. They had gone with Krishna in their mind. Uh, <laughs> they, all the Vajpasis came and there was only one word to describe their feelings. Anticipation. Everyone looked in one direction. Even the branches of the trees looked in one direction. The birds looked in one direction. They looked in the direction from where Krishna left in the morning. And this was the direction through which Krishna will return. All of a sudden, all these bridge buses who stand at the gate, you must know they're dressed in colorful dresses. Some have kajals on their eyes. And the elder cowherd men have sticks. The toddlers are there. They don't know what's going on, but they also look in the same direction. <laughs> uh, uh, they all of a sudden, a huge crowd of lo loving bridge passes became agitated. <clears throat> There's a dust cloud coming up in the western direction, and they hear the sound of flutes. So they assume that Krishna, with his multitude of cows, returns. But no, they made a mistake. <laughs> it was the wind only who blew up the dust. And the wind only who was falling into the reeds at the banks of the Yamuna and made that flute-like uh, sound. Meanwhile, Krishna looks at the cows. The cows look so content, my dear devotees, because they are with Krishna. You cannot imagine what love Krishna has for all of the cows. When Krishna sees the cows in the morning, he pays his obeisances to the cows, takes the dust on which they have walked and smears it here between his tilak. Then he gets up and believe it or not, Krishna expands in as many forms as there are cows and scratches them here. This is the favorite spot of the cows for scratching. Mm. So <laughs> the cows have robust bodies, <coughs> fat udders, because they have eaten healthy grass and they are so happy because of the association with Lord Krishna. So Krishna, how does Krishna look? My dear devotees, the sight of Krishna is so beautiful. His beautiful bluish dark body is covered with a thin layer of white Brajaraj. He has usually a white turban and then on the turban a little string with 
pearl beads and uh, uh, he says in his beautiful voice boys time to go take your flutes and horns make some music and then let's call the cows Puijan Prabhu always says there's a therapy against depression or sadness. That's to, to call out the names of Krishna's cows. Would you like to try it? Yes. Shavali. Shavali. Mridanga Muki. Mridanga Muki. Pishangi. Pishangi. Durmila. Durmila. Shushila. Shushila. Come here, we go home. So the, the cows c come, but of course there are some cows who hide because Krishna normally remembers to call all the cows, but some cows he deliberately does not call. So these cows wait and they pretend to not know that it's time to go home because they wait for Krishna to call them. <laughs> so only when Krishna uh, lovingly shakes his head and calls their name Hangsi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> then Hangsi comes galloping with joy and mooing and going to Krishna and rubbing her head. You didn't forget me. Krishna doesn't forget any of his loving devotees. And Hangsi knows it. This whole scene of Krishna returning home looks like a mighty ship that is white in color that is steered by a black captain and a white captain. The black captain is, you know everything, and the white captain, yes, and uh, of course the ship itself are these multitudes of happy cows. Rupa Goswami has written a verse, it's, he said, it's very difficult to recognize Krishna because Krishna is usually covered by the Vedic scriptures they don't talk directly about him and he's also covered by the dust <laughs> which is raised by the homecoming cows so therefore it's very difficult to find out krishna mm. so mother earth finds out or oh, krishna is now coming with his lotus feet and she has an idea she transforms her body into soft powder and waits that she is raised by the cow's hooves so that she can embrace Krishna's body. You must know, ordinarily the earth would be sad because of the sharp hooves which wound her body. But because Krishna walks right uh, uh, after his cows, mm, his soft lotus feet are healing the cuts in Mother Earth's body. When he steps with his lotus feet, which are <coughs> pinkish, you know, at the in the inside of the feet. When he steps over Mother Earth, his lotus feet are just so wonderful or enigmatic that wherever he steps, lotus, uh, land-growing lotus flowers pop up. This means Mother Earth is very jolly, very happy. Mm. Do you know when Krishna leaves the village of Vrindavan, will he walk behind the cows or in front of the cows? Yeah. 
he, he walks in front. <clears throat> because he has to allure them out of their comfortable stables. So when they, the cows see him, they, they think, let's go, cowgy. <laughs> However, uh, when uh, Krishna returns, the cows automatically want to go back to where their calves wait. No? The calves are also there. So Krishna will walk uh, in, uh, behind the cows. And so then Krishna plays his flute. Mm. Krishna looks at this stage like a bee which is covered with pollen. The dust is on his beautiful dark hair. The hair comes out under his white turban. The gopis like to meditate about this scene that Krishna sits on a little footstool stall. He leans his head at the robust stomach of the cow and he smiles and looks left and right. Then Krishna takes his hands to the fat udder and he makes a square <laughs> which goes, the milk goes to the earth because he will first worship Mother Bhumi for giving the grass that the cows can eat. And then he directs the milk into the bucket which is between his two shanks. And he, when the milk goes in, Vishwana Chakravati Thakur says, it, it makes the sound, shana, 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 something like this. Now, what happens also is the Krishna's very fine dhoti material. What is the color of Krishna's dhoti? Yellow. Good. It, it becomes wet with the surplus milk drops. And then the yellow cloth sticks to his bluish uh, ties, which, which are shining underneath the cloth. You, you understand the cloth is wet, Krishna's thighs are here, and he is in the ecstatic shana shana mood. <laughs> and then the gopis see this and they faint with ecstasy. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> There's real love, is there? Is there? So I request all the devotees to maybe now, for a moment, think about Krishna coming home from the ground. We will sing together with Malaharinam briefly the Hare Krishna mantra as Krishna returns from the ground. And we will think that as we think, sing that Krishna is, uh, uh, is uh, returning and coming into our lives. In your mind's eye, see Lord Krishna wearing the Vajrajanti garland. See how he is so fragrant. See how he is laughing and joking with his cowherd voice. And how
this way Krishna returns. There are many devatas left and right on the pathway. Some have brought their instruments to play, but when they hear Krishna's flute play, they, they put their instruments to the side because they feel we cannot accompany such beautiful flute play. their eyes that are pained by pangs of separation and the wind carries to them the sweet fragrance of Krishna. How does Krishna smell? Well, he smells like a lotus flower that is covered with a little sandalwood then there's a tinge of musk in the smell and then a little from this wood it's called a guru wood it has a little uh, how do you call it sticky substance in it and when you burn it it, it smells just wonderful so Krishna is, fragrance is a mixture of lotus sandalwood musk and this aguru can you imagine how beautiful this must smell? I don't think we can't. So, they, so amongst all these devotees, or Brajavasis, who are waiting for Krishna, there's one person who is a newcomer. He had come in the afternoon in the village of Brindavan. And what he noted is that all the people were doing their tasks, like washing things in the household or being there in the fields which were just near to the village. But it seemed their mind was not with them. We find a nectar of devotion that that sometimes, uh, uh, yeah, they're so very bewildered. There are many forms of bewilderment there. And he has noticed, what, what type of people are these? They're so beautiful, so intelligent, so wise. But what one tries to churn yogurt from a pot of water, water will not bring forth butter, even if you churn it for a whole day. So they could see they were occupied with something else in their mind. But now where they hear the sound of Krishna's flute and see the dust raised by the cows, they all seem to come back together in one piece. And they all start to move towards this one place uh, you know, they, uh, and, and the, the, the newcomer follows them. He noticed the river Jamuna stops. 
it starts to flow back in the same direction from where the came. And then he sees Krishna dancing with his cowherd boys who all play the flute for with him. There's a whole flute concert going on. <laughs> and they and, and the, the boy runs towards where Krishna is coming. And as Krishna sees the cowherd boy, the, the, the newcomer, he runs uh, in his direction. And when they meet, uh, Krishna embraces the newcomer and faints. So Balaram, no, not Balaram, his intelligence, but the coward boys and especially the gopis think, demon, 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 that they have seen in the, or they have heard that, that on the earth sometimes Krishna is attacked by demons. So they think this newcomer is a shapeshifter. He's a demon who has taken on the form of a boy who to kill their Lord Krishna, their Krishna. So only Balaram maintains his calm. He, the newcomer is totally bewildered. Krishna whom he loves, Krishna whom he has tried to attain since many, many lifetimes lies drenched in his tears, unconscious on the floor. So Balaram says, take care, take care. So he takes the hand of this boy and puts the hand on Krishna's chest where the heart is. And then he says, tell the name, tell his name. So the cow, so this newcomer says, Govinda Damo Dharamadaveti Sing with me, Govinda Damo Dharamadaveti Govinda Damo Dharamadaveti Please everybody, Govinda Damo Everybody go in the damo, the damo, the meti, 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 everybody. Krishna 
hears how the newcomer, under Balaram's instruction, chants his name, Krishna comes back to life. And he says, in a very affectionate voice, Welcome! Welcome! Svagatam! Susvagatam! My dear boy, I am fortunate. No, not fortunate. I'm most fortunate to meet you here. For so long, I have been eager to see you. The Lord is extremely jubilant. That's why he repeats the word Svagatam, welcome, twice. My dear friend, you have passed many lifetimes without paying any attention to me at all. I did not forget you, but you forgot me. For so long, hope had me dancing like a fool. I was thinking, perhaps in this lifetime, or this, or this, or this, or that, he will finally turn his face towards me. But you forgot me completely. He showed me no mercy at all. And I grew more impatient and more impatient. My anxiety became like a mountain. I wanted to receive your favor. So I transgressed my eternal code of conduct and arranged for you to take your current birth. And Krishna said, I transgressed my own code of conduct. He was referring to that Krishna never ever mixes or let us say imposes himself on the individual freedom of the soul. But what he did in this case is he arranged for this particular soul to take a particular birth. We are fortunate we have a few devotees with us who have taken their birth from parents who were Krishna conscious. This was Krishna's arrangement for you. Krishna has been longing for you. He wanted that you come back. And then I did something else. In the divine district of Govardhan, which is my most beloved abode, I myself, says Krishna, became your guru, known by the name Jayanta. My dear devotees, anyone who has even a small contact with Giriyaj Govardhan knows that the atmosphere there is full of mercy and divine arrangement. Just being there at the foothills of Giriyaj helps you to cross the ocean of illusion and attain Krishna and love for him. Then Krishna says, Today you have at last fulfilled the desire I have harbored for so long. Please nourish your happiness and mine by staying here forever. <laughs> so Gopkuma, and that's the name of this boy, might say, you did so much for me, but I did nothing at all for you. I did not even look your way. But the Lord says in all humility, what good have I ever done for you? But you have done me 
the greatest favor by coming here. Please stay with me forever. My dear devotees, where else can you find such love? Where else? In the scriptures we find that the spiritual world is free from any type of anxiety. No kunta. Every step which is done there is a dance. And the soundtrack, not soundtrack, the sound which you hear everywhere is the sound of Krishna's flute. Krishna was so joyful to finally see Gop Kumar because he cares. Everyone, my dear devotee, who makes the slightest effort, the smallest effort, the tiniest effort to reach Krishna, Krishna is so happy to observe it. He says even Ananta and Baladev what to speak of Udava are not as dear to him as those who do their best to try to reach him. Once there was one of my god brothers on a morning walk. He accompanied Srila Prabhupada on his morning walk and he had a question. He had harbored this question for a long, long time in his heart. And now there was an opportunity to ask the question. He said, what is the devotee's greatest enemy? Prabhupada looked at him and said, he himself. He himself is his greatest enemy because he's a rascal. <laughs> he is his greatest enemy. So just get out of this rascaldom and you become your friend. Nobody is enemy. You are yourself your enemy. Nobody is enemy. So uh, getting out of this, <laughs> being enemies to ourselves, means we become our friend. If you want to do something that is good, learn to become a friend of Krishna. We will end this beautiful evening which has been made melodious by our Bali and Amala and Govinda Ram, Ram Govinda. We will sing now to Krishna. I request you to Shift your sitting position if you have not done already and look at the deities. We will sing for a little bit, like half an hour or so, to Krishna. Because there's one secret which you need to know. When Krishna sees that the devotees in this world gather together and chant together the holy names, he is magically attracted to their presence and stays right in their midst. Shri Krishna ki jai.
Oh, 